Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, your master certified coach and midlife mentor. And once again, I am so glad to be here with you for this week's episode, which is all about what it's like when your nest fills up again. And what I mean is, today we're talking about your grown kids moving back home with some togetherness tips about what to do, how to help, how to make things better when your empty nest fills up again. So. It's a common transition this time of year, end of college and all, for some gearing up for graduation, often with no job lined up just yet. And of course, this year, many adult kids are moving back home for a variety of other reasons too. So it's not just that they're graduating, it's not just that they're coming home for the summer, but there's other issues. There's unemployment, there's unsafe living situations in certain cities with COVID-19. Maybe they feel more high risk. Maybe their living situation with roommates is more high risk. And also, kids might be moving home just so they're with family and they don't want to feel alone. They don't want to live alone. So as you can imagine and might be experiencing, this is a unfamiliar territory for a lot of women in the middle. And now that we're deeper into the ramifications of the new normal of sheltering in home, it begs the question, how much togetherness is too much togetherness? <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride out there, my friends. It really is. So it's funny, not everyone handles the empty nest thing with the same level of comfort. That is for sure. For some, it's dread. Was this you? Was Dealing with your empty nest situation, really scary? And were you really sad about it? Maybe you worried about it in advance and hated every minute of being in that home with those empty bedrooms. If this is what you were dealing with, reinventing yourself was more of a challenge and probably full of confusion. You didn't know who you were anymore when you didn't have that role of a mom with a family you know, who needed you like that. Now your kids for sure don't need you in the same way. It's not that they don't need you though. They just don't need you in the same way. Now, this type of feeling or coping with empty nest is not the case for everyone. Some of you did a happy dance and started dreaming up ideas for how to use that empty bedroom to your own advantage. Now, if this was you, you probably embraced figuring out how to relate with your young adults, instead of being worried about the whole relationship ending, right? Like you saw potential for how it could move forward and you still felt important, but in a very different way. I have a feeling you were probably looking at it more as a new beginning than an ending. And I think that's really the crux of the difference between these two very different and very real experiences of shifting into your empty nest life. But today, my friend, we're talking about re-entry, your nest filling back up, and perhaps even the new normal for the foreseeable future. This is something that's pretty common between both experiences of empty nest, too, I think. It doesn't really seem to matter if you hated your empty nest experience or loved your empty nest experience. Just like a space capsule heading back to Earth, re-entry can be bumpy. And I know that I'm not alone in suggesting that once you get into the swing of things, empty nest can be pretty, pretty, pretty good. It really can. And even if it started out like dread, I'm sure that you started to like get into it more and feel more comfortable with it eventually. Some of my favorite things about empty nest are less cleaning, less cooking, less planning, And likewise, more spontaneity, more free time, more privacy, and sometimes even more money, right? When somebody gets off the payroll or doesn't have tuition, something like that, you start to feel it. So yeah, we love our amazing kids and yeah, we miss our amazing kids. And 
yeah, we want solid relationships with our amazing kids, but this reentry that we're experiencing right now, it's bumpy. So here's why what's going on now is a little different than what's usually going on this time of year. And I'm not even talking about the fear that's associated with the pandemic and managing actual illness and perhaps even serious illness or even death in your family or, you know, something really serious going on with people that you really care about. My heart totally goes out to you so hard if it's not just some bumpy crapola going on, you know, with you and your kids right now. So I'm here for you. I have a free group. I offer coaching. So please connect with me if you think I'm a good fit and can be helpful uh, with what's going on with you. But for today, I'm just talking about the bumpy crapola. (laughs) I'm just talking about this bumpy ride of going from empty nest back to full nest, but with a twist. Your nest has changed. It's not necessarily a nest when everyone knew all the rules and bought into them and your ability and authority to set them. It's not a nest with paid help, like maybe you had somebody cleaning once a week or helping with the yard work or who knows what. That's not going on right now. It's not a nest where you have a break and somewhere to go on a regular basis, right? Typically, that's not what's going on right now. And it's not a nest with lots of activities and outside obligations to keep everyone busy, fulfilled, and engaged. It's not a nest where the babies hadn't left yet and didn't get a taste of independence. It's not a nest without raging hormones. It's not a nest that welcomes everybody's friends in with open arms. Oh no, the nest has changed and almost without warning. Your nest is kind of like a camping trip when they were young. Everyone's walking around in sweatpants. Regular showers are a thing of the past. Schedules are a little wonky and unstructured. Motivation is questionable. But here is how it's not like a camping trip. Your nest is full of big, kind of independent young adults who have plenty to say, are experiencing plenty of loss, are uncomfortable with a lot of uncertainty about their future, and how long they may be stuck living at home. Your nest just might be full of people who would rather not be there. That's a little different than good old family camping trip where it was pretty exciting to identify a stick bug. (laughs) That's actually something that happened on one of our camping trips when the kids were small. For some reason, all these stick bugs were sticking to the tire of the van, and it was fascinating. These stick bugs are long, And I had a bug identification book, and we have some old video of this adorable little thing that happened where everybody was so fascinated. I mean, who wouldn't be fascinated, right, to to just stare at a bunch of stick bugs and identify them? Very unusual. It was super fun. That's not happening anymore. (laughs) Your nest doesn't feel like your nest anymore either. Now, I know I'm just scratching the surface with what might be going on. And I'm not even talking about some of the more serious issues that you might be dealing with either, like kids who aren't following the isolation guidelines and maybe struggling with mental health issues like depression or even drug issues. I'm not talking about the stress you might be feeling either about your chickadees who may be living halfway around the world or in another state either, the ones who aren't at home. That's a whole other issue. For today, though, like I said, what I'm hearing from client after client about typical home life is what I'm talking about. That's it. Parents were enjoying a simpler and quieter lifestyle, working on developing and managing their relationships with their young adult children who lived elsewhere. And then without much warning, the kids moved home for an undetermined amount of time. So let the communication games begin. And of course, as parents, there's so much excitement around hanging with your kids more than usual. Like, we are into this. This is excitement for us. And you love your kids for sure, but it is an adjustment. And most of the bumps seem to be in these areas. The first area is independence. It's really no surprise that the kids have enjoyed being more independent while they were away from home, regardless of how much financial support you provided. 
They were probably loving being on their own and all that it meant. They felt independent, even if they weren't completely financially independent. And they had more independent lives than they do now. They could come and go as they pleased. They could eat what they wanted. They could eat when they wanted. They could leave a mess if they decided to. They could talk to you less. They could screen your calls. (laughs) They didn't have to answer as many questions. They could cook whatever they wanted. They could buy whatever they wanted. They could go to bed whenever they wanted with no discussion or commentary about, oh, how late were you up last night? Or uh, just anything, right? A lot of times we make observations that they find incredibly annoying and think of as intrusive. We're just trying to make conversation, (laughs) but there's often a reaction. So I'm not saying that you're all over them, and I'm not saying that you are in their face, and I'm not saying that you're, you know, requesting that they ask permission. But in a household, it's common to say hello and goodbye and to ask questions that you probably don't think are out of line at all. But to someone who isn't used to that anymore, like I said, those questions could be off-putting and could seem intrusive. So that whole independence is a thing. And then the other thing that happens with the independence is around the food issues. Because I don't know about you, but something that's come up in our family is, you know, just trying to manage the food, the resources, because it's not as easy to just go buy what you want anytime you want it. So you have to plan a little bit more and you need to coordinate recipes a little bit more so that everybody, you know, knows how many eggs there are, So it's just a little bit more coordination. So when kids are leaving alone, uh, living alone, they don't need to coordinate this stuff. They can just do what they want and it's all fine. And then if they don't have the ingredients, you just run to the store and get them. So that is one area that's come up in our house with a family of five is just planning the ingredients based on recipes, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's one area, independence. And then the other area is privacy. So this is related to what I was saying about those questions. There would be fewer questions if we saw less, right? So when kids are away, we don't really see what's going on. (laughs) I mean, sometimes you can call a quick FaceTime and you might see something, but, you know, you just don't see as much. So have you noticed how often the bedroom doors are closed? (laughs) That's what happens when, you know, kids live in these houses and in apartments. Their life takes place in their room. And that kind of translates to living at home and getting privacy. Yes, they want their privacy in a way that isn't exactly the same as when they were younger. I get it. And I want privacy. And I bet you want privacy too. That is something I've heard a lot from women in the middle is how to find more privacy. So we're all struggling with privacy. So the third area is contribution. Yep, lots of bumps about contribution. Again, this has come up a lot uh, with talking to you guys, women in the middle. Easing back into the whole contributing to the family routine hasn't happened in a while. And these discussions can be a little bumpy, but without sorting it all out, it can lead to resentment. So these conversations have to be had. More people, more food, more dishes, more garbage, more vacuuming, more bathroom sharing, more laundry, blah, blah, blah. So have you sorted this out yet? Did you resort to a chores chart like you used to have with the spinner? I've heard some stories about that old chore chart coming out and even some creative solutions for ways to enjoy helping out more. And a lot of it has to do with headphones and music, doing things together, just making, you know, what what's necessary to run a family just a little bit more pleasurable for everyone. Also, being a little looser on expectations can help. Okay, the fourth area is family time. And what I mean here is what your ex- what are your expectations about ways to spend time together that are fun rather than just living under the same roof? In a way, we've kind of become some potential sources of entertainment for each other, except we think we're entertaining, but the kids uh, generally do not think we're entertaining. (laughs) So I've heard some good ideas here, including family exercise, like exercising together, cooking together, even having dinner together is something. Uh, One thing we're doing a lot more of is walking the dog together. That's something we haven't done in years. 
So how about you? These are the main issues that I'm hearing from women in my community, but what are the main issues that are coming up for, for you? I would love to hear about them. All bumps are not created equal. Some are little glitches that can easily be worked out and others are a bit more painful to sort out. Um, But the goal is that everyone is happier and not more stressed. So I came up with five togetherness tips to help you in this crazy time. Tip number one, think fun. You used to be a more fun mom. I know it. Try to find her again. Seriously, remember the time you stuck those googly eyes on a carton of milk in the fridge? Or the time you actually made green eggs and ham? Now's the time to remember some of that silliness and bring it to the forefront of your mind again as you come up with a few ideas about how to hang together successfully and with more lightness. So find something fun to do together. We have a pool table, so I suggested that we start shooting pool again or have a pool tournament. My family loves board games. Hubby loves board games. I can't stand them. So I'm like, well, what do I like to do with the with the kids that could be more fun? Another thing I did was download Pokemon Go. My kids love it. And we're walking the dog. And it turns out to be something that they can help me with. And it's not that hard and I can go at my own pace. I don't need to listen to a half hour of instructions about some strategy game that I have no interest in. And I can't even read the directions because the cards are so small. (laughs) The cards, the writing, everything, need the reading glasses. Anyway, that drives me crazy. Uh, Walking the dog together rather than doing it as a chore. Buying fun foods from their childhood. I surprised them with Joe Louis today. They loved it. Now, I don't think you can get Joe Louis in the States. It's kind of like a wagon wheel without the graham cracker. So when I grew up, uh, wagon wheels were super, super fun. So I thought, what, you know, what can we have? So I've been buying Oreos. And then I thought, oh my God, those Joe Louis were pretty fun. They loved it. So think about fun foods from their childhood. I mean, everybody's hanging around home, right? The other thing is to find a show or a movie and watch it together. Right now, so many kids or young adults are, you know, in their rooms with the doors closed, streaming Netflix or doing something individually. So think about something that you can do together. Is there something that you can watch together? And for us, it's Curb Your Enthusiasm. Here's tip number two. Think practical. There are a lot more people in the kitchen using the laundry, all this kind of stuff. So what is going on that could be better, that could make it better with, you know, just a slight tweak, like a like a gadget or a little tweak to a system or an idea of how to do something a little bit differently? You can have a big win with a small tweak. So here are some ideas. One of my favorite things right now is the Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker. If you haven't heard of this little device, I suggest you go on Google right now and look it up. It's the funniest little thing, but it makes a sandwich, a breakfast sandwich with such ease. And it's something we kind of line up to do together. So we pull out all the ingredients, which are like, it's like an English muffin and some spinach and some cheese, an egg, some hot sauce, so many things, right? So you just kind of, there's little levels to the sandwich maker, but it cooks the egg, it melts the cheese, and then you like slide this little thingy over and it all goes together in this beautiful little breakfast sandwich. So that is something that we use almost every day. And we're getting, you know, a little bit more creative with the ingredients. We get them all out and we all just line them up. They only take five minutes to cook each. So that's like a fun little thing that helps with the breakfast. Oh yeah, avocados. We add avocados to ours. So another thing is coffee. Everybody is getting a little bit more particular with coffee. So what can you do to make that a little bit more fun? Is it buying special beans? Is it getting a grinder? Is it getting a frother? Like what could you do? Is it an ingredient or a little gadget that would just make that a little bit more fun? Just elevate it a little bit. Um, Sharing the load. With cleaning, like I mentioned, like just having that conversation and divide it up. And then do you have the right things to make it easy? Do you have the right mop? Do you have the right spray? 
what what could you do there that just makes things go a little bit more smoother? Um, what about communicating about the things that are absolutely driving you crazy rather than stewing on it? So you don't want to maybe talk about everything that's driving you crazy, but pick something that's really driving you crazy and just try to improve that. With cooking, do you have a system around cooking dinner? Is everybody responsible for their own thing? Or do you have kind of a schedule? Who loves to cook? What? And do if one of your kids has a special meal, maybe that can be their thing. Or maybe you have breakfast for dinner one night, or maybe you just offload. Maybe one night a week, everybody's on their own, and that's that. We also have some frozen things, frozen pizzas and frozen fries. And I found a company that uh, offers fresh, like individual serving meals. So I bought a bunch of those. So there's just more options. Uh, And asking the kids what they want to make and making sure that you have those ingredients. So if you have a kid who likes to bake, do you have enough of those ingredients? If you have somebody who who really likes, um, you know, a special recipe, it's just going out of your way and trying to make sure that that can happen too. Uh, one thing that does drive us crazy in our family is refilling things when they're empty. So for example, the soap, when the soap is empty, does somebody refill it? When the toilet paper is empty, does somebody refill it? So those conversations have to come up. And what's super fun is to notice when I'm not the only one annoyed by it. So you might see that, you know, your kids get annoyed about these things too, and they can help you um, step it up a little in the house. So to make sure everybody is refilling things when needing needing to. Another thing that's interesting about thinking practically uh, is exercise equipment. So if you have some exercise equipment that you're sharing, or if one of your kids has brought something home, you know, talking about it, making sure that everybody is understanding what the rules are about sharing it. I do have one of those Peloton bikes, so I put a container of wipes next to it and just made sure I had an individual conversation with everybody about wiping it down and not just the screen, but like wiping everything down that you touched. And, you know, just more communication about that sort of thing. Okay, tip number three, think self-care. You've lost privacy. I get it. So what can you do to find some? How can you find time for yourself? How can you plug in? How can you rest? How can you figure this out in your home with your current situation? One thing I recommend, if you can't find anything, because everybody has different aged kids and different responsibilities, but you can usually find more time in the bathroom. You're already in there. You're probably in there alone. (laughs) You can make it more fun in there. You can definitely make it more fun. So I have uh, had this conversation with several people about what you can do in the bathroom, everything from finding time to journal, if you have a nice tub situation, to taking a longer bath. Everybody's bathroom situation is different, and some bathrooms are more comfortable and luxurious than others. But just think about it as a time where it's very easy for you to get away. Now, if you have more flexibility of that, you can definitely think about getting out of your house, maybe going for a walk or a bike ride yourself. Now, I know before I suggested it as a family potential quality time experience, but maybe intentionally, you want to do that sort of thing by yourself. So think about that. The other thing to do is to really think about what will elevate your personal experience. So if you want to exercise, maybe you need to buy that piece of equipment or buy that clothing or subscribe to that service or replace your sneakers or buy those new running shorts that you've been looking at. Anything, right? And even fun things. If you're going to be spending more time on your front porch then maybe you want to improve the porch furniture or get a swing. One of the things that I purchased today was those magnetic eyelashes. Now, if you're a listener to the podcast, you might recall that I had a very negative experience with some magnetic eyelashes. So this is a different brand and a different system with the magnetic eyeliner. So I'm going to give this a go. And I thought it would be a fun quarantine kind of activity to do just for myself. Now, if you don't think you have enough time, I really want you to work on that thought. Because remember what those flight attendants said in the days where we used to be able to fly, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you can help anyone else. So you do have time. 
it all starts with your thinking. Could you be open to the idea that you have more time? Could you be getting better at creating more time? Could you look at your calendar and be really specific about scheduling time for yourself? There are things that you can do that start with the way you're thinking about time and self-care, and it really is gonna have to start with your thoughts. So that's tip three. So tip number one, we have think fun. Tip number two, think practical. Tip number three, think self-care. And tip number four is think gratitude. You guys, this is the best. Being more grateful just might be the key to the universe. (laughs) There's really no downside. Spending more time like this with your family is highly unusual and really may never happen again. So what stories and memories do you want to have about this time? Really think about what you can be grateful for now and notice how it makes you feel. You could be grateful for another family meal, grateful to watch the kids more as they grow up, grateful for more time to be present with them, grateful for more walks, more games, and more conversations. And tip number five, think mindset. Ah, yes, your thoughts. I just mentioned it briefly, but here it it deserves its own tip. It always comes back to your thoughts. You can decide in advance how you want to feel during this time with a full nest again. You can be aggravated or you can be relaxed. You can be a perfectionist or you can be more calm. You can be uptight or you can be patient. You can decide how you want to experience your full nest and all of this togetherness. You can decide in advance. And when you really understand that your thoughts create your feelings, you're halfway there. The rest of it comes with practicing to think these purposeful thoughts intentionally to create what you're looking for personally. So, yep, there'll be bumps. And yes, there will be challenges. But there's also a whole lot of love for those kids of yours. In a way, it's kind of weird because It's a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that's less expensive than a fancy vacation without internet. I know you may have done that. We do that. We take a sailboat trip. And one of the beautiful things is that we're on a boat with no internet for a week with the family. So this is kind of, it is a crazy opportunity and it can really be thought of as a gift. Way less expensive than a vacation. Yeah, we have internet here, thank God, but we have so much time together. We are together. They're describing it in Canada as being in a bubble, like being in a bubble with your people. And that's pretty much what it is. They're stuck with you. Capitalize on that, my friend. The choice is yours. So there you have it. Five tips to help you with all of this togetherness. Think fun, think practical, think self-care, think gratitude, and think mindfulness. Having more fun with your full nest is always an option too, even now with everything going on. My focus as a midlife coach is to help you waste less time spinning and feeling stuck. It's time to get excited about your life again. Being the queen of your brain domain, it really is the best way to be. Check out the show notes with more information and links at susierosenstein.com. Download my free ebook, Nine Secrets to Get Unstuck in Your 50s, at suzyrosenstein.com forward slash nine secrets. And if you want to connect more with me in the future, join the free Women in the Middle Community Facebook group where we continue the podcast conversation. Head over to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash women in the middle community. You can also work with me directly and get unbelievably effective coaching to take you from being stuck and confused to being crystal clear and excited about your future. You really can. So just book your free call and let's talk. The 50 Unplugged Mastermind might just be the thing that you've been looking for. Head over to www.talktosuzy.com. Let's do this, ladies. It's time for you to put yourself first, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening and I will talk to you next week. 